through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 229. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of February 12th. Mm-hmm. That's a Tuesday. Yep. We're almost halfway through the month, Spencer. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Sad. it's kind of sad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's February. It always goes by in a flash, even though it's only like two or three days shorter. Yeah. It's a good week, though. You yeah. Know, there's some there's some entertaining stuff. Yeah. Um, some major releases, some smaller stuff, mm -hmm, but uh, mm -hmm. obviously we're going to kick it off with the big release of the week, which is Skyfall. Mm -hmm. uh, technically, for those who are not uh, physical media oriented yes. anymore, it had been released digitally on the 5th of yes. February, but we're talking the Blu-ray release of it now. Um, strangely, no combo packs or anything like that. James Bond we're shutting sad. it down. This is what, like 50 years of James Bond? Just came out, yeah. 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 So well. it's like, you know, Come on, guys. Yeah. Plenty, there's plenty of stuff that you could combine together. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the release itself, it's kind of okay, I guess. It's not anything yeah. super noteworthy. I mean, there's a lot of, like, details about, um, especially if you get the Blu-ray. The, the DVD only has uh, a couple featurettes about making James Bond, the title sequence, women, locations, and DB5. Hmm. Um, but... The Blu-ray version has a whole bunch of things. It says the intro, the opening sequence, the villains, the action, the music, the end sequence. There's one about M. There's one about the future. Wow. Um, which so are clearly all... Clearly the much more packed. Yes. Yeah. And additionally, that has two commentaries. One with Sam Mendes. Very nice. Uh, and one with producers um, Michael G. Wilson and Barbara Bracoli. Hmm. And the production designer as well. So... You know, it's always interesting with Sam Mendes to realize that at one point he wanted Kevin Spacey to be the villain of this film. I think Kevin Spacey would have been a great villain. I think Kevin Spacey would have been a great villain in general. I don't know if necessarily he would have been a great villain of this film, but I think he. I think he could have done it. very similar to what. Um, I mean, Javier I guess. It, did. I mean, I guess, I mean, he didn't really do anything too action heavy himself. I mean, uh, it's it not as like, much about the action heavy, more villainous. I, I like to think of the. Sometime, every now and then I like to remember that Kevin Spacey was a bad Lex Luthor, and then I just kind of lose hope in him. But then I remember all the good stuff. Yeah, like usual House suspects. Of being usual Green. suspects. Well, yeah, obviously. Kaiser Sose. Yeah. I mean, shit, he should have done Kaiser Sose in this movie. That would have <laughs> been awesome. I would love that. But, you know, I, I mean, for me, I enjoyed Skyfall. Mm -hmm. It sort of felt like a combination of um, GoldenEye and... The world is not enough. I can see that. Which I mean, but yeah. it is essentially those two things: Rogue, MI5 mm -hmm. agent, and um, uh, the person trying to get back at mm -hmm. MI6. Yes. Um, or Rogue Double Seven Agent. Yeah, I know. Um, I knew. I I I was tracking. But like, it's just like it was those two films match up, and I was like, this is good. But I feel like I've seen this story before in some. You know, way. Fifty Years of Bond. Not surprising that at some point you would have to uh, make a story that was kind of similar or some other ones. I don't know. I'm I'm in that more minority that wasn't completely instantly fawning over the movie. I enjoyed mm. it, but like I thought the end was sort of anticlimactic. And mm -hmm. I don't know it's still a very well done movie. I still enjoyed it quite. I a think bit. it's interesting to note that it's the in Fifty Years of James Bond movies. It is the second film in which James Bond actually suffers a gunshot wound that's pretty impressive he's also shot in thunderball so a while ago so not even like roger moore or like way back early connery that's pretty impressive yeah. way to dodge those bullets james <laughs> get it i do uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving right along we're going to talk about a smaller release from yes. last year and that is bully mm -hmm. this is the documentary sort of that tackles the issue of bullying in yes. schools and was somewhat controversial in the release that it had yes. and what it depicted in the movie. And it was originally, the MPAA rated it R, which was very problematic mm -hmm. because they wanted it to be something that could be shown to, to kids. The, yeah, the proper elements. Mm -hmm. So they wanted PG-13 at least. Uh, Weinstein Company appealed for a lower rating for, those, for obvious reasons. The MPAA refused to alter the rating so distributors rendered the original rating and opted the film to be released in unre unrated versions when mm -hmm. it came out, which, of course, there's many less theaters that are let yeah, unrated theaters be kids. shown. Yeah. Finally, the filmmakers agreed to cut some, but not all of the relevant language, because it was all about language, of all mm. things. It was just swearing, which, come on, if there's anything that kids are... It's absurd that like, that would make Sex it. and violence, maybe I can understand, but swearing, that's like the get least with, R of R-rated thing. You things. think about, like, you know, Die Hard, uh, yeah. Live Free or Die Hard, and yeah. what they got away with for yeah. it to be a PG-13 and they're yeah. calling this one 
left. I'm yeah, sorry. and what's sad is when it finally was released as a PG-13 cut, uh, its widest release that it got was 265 theaters. That's not very many theaters. No, it's a shame. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely an interesting and important message, and the, the release is pretty good. I mean, you got a combo pack with a Blu-ray DVD that you can get. No digital copy, but you know, it's an indie film, so yeah. you can do. Yeah. Um, it's got a filmmaker Q&A, some featurettes about it, celebrity PSAs, mm. Deleted scenes and one interesting thing that I liked um, for the blu-ray only special version of bully there are on the blu-ray mm. only there's a special version of bully that is edited for younger audiences. So oh, I interesting. Think, I think that's huh. a fair approach. To, yeah, you know have if you're one, gonna release them. You might as well release them all right? <laughs> well, I, mean, I, th I think I think it's nice that you know um, That sort of gives the impetus or the, the power to the parents yes. to judge whether That's which true. version they deem That's is true. the one appropriate to their mm -hmm. kids, whether they think scare, swearing is not a big deal exactly. or not yeah. like us. It's a mean, good point. Or te same thing with teachers. They could buy and get the film and it's full. They didn't have to you know, get a lesser mm -hmm. film just to be yeah. able to show it. They could have the option there. Options are always better yeah. when it comes to home totally. owning. Totally. So, yeah. or home owning. Home, <laughs> home owning stuff at home. <laughs> right. Home video. Sure. Let's say that. Even though it's not it's like, this is anymore. a very different podcast. Uh, yeah. 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 And you know, this uh, old this old uh, MacGuffin <laughs> Don't uh, have us make your home or no. own it because no, we'll probably run it into the ground probably. quite literally. Yeah. yeah, we're not handy. No. So don't ask. <laughs> no. Moving right along, we're mm -hmm. going to talk about one of the more action oriented films this yeah. week The Man with the Iron Fist. Mm -hmm. This is the directorial debut of The Rizza, uh -huh. who was, I believe, Tang Clan. I believe he was backed by, was it Eli Roth? Yeah, in Eli Roth this? was the producer. Um, you know, starring people like Lucy Liu, Jamie Chung, Rick Yoon. And Russell, Russell Crowe, Crow. yeah, uh, and obviously the Rizza playing yeah, the, the titular character, yes, of the Man with the Iron Fist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's a fun action film, definitely <laughs> one that's not meant to be taken too serious. Yes, it's sort of a throwback to sort of the classic kung fu type mm -hmm. movies, which Wu Tang Clan and the Rizza specifically have Are always been. With. Yeah, the Rizza did like music for a lot of like animated shows that like anime that was kung fu based. Ghost Dog. It's a I think it was like Samurai Jack or something. Samurai like Shampoo. Shampoo? Shampoo. Shampoo. Okay. Yeah, it was like a hip hop samurai mix okay. show on Adult okay. Swim. Very good, very good action. Okay, show. very cool. Um, in terms of this release, there is the Blu ray, DVD, digital copy, and Ultraviolet on one, which is very great. nice. Uh, there's the unrated version of the film, which I'm curious to see what mm -hmm. was kept out. To Considering make it it's probably all violent, because it's a very violent film. There's uh, 30 minutes of deleted scenes. Uh, <laughs> is that surprising? There's a featurette called. A Path to the East, which makes sense since there is this kind of find of Eastern mysticism. Yes. Uh, there's a look uh, inside the man with Iron Fist, and then there's on the set with Riza, hmm. sort of catalog cataloging, you know, making the film. And hmm. granted, those last few ones we mentioned are like only a couple minutes long, but you know. I'm not surprised there's 30 minutes of deleted footage because the first cut of the film was four hours long. Wow. And the RZA was like, oh, we can just cut it into two films. And Eli Roth was like, that's that's a bad idea. And so then they cut it down to 90 minutes, which seems to me like you probably, probably if you could cut a four-hour movie to 90 minutes, it probably deserved to be cut if that wasn't probably. If you didn't cut a four-hour movie down to like 220 or yeah. like 205 but to 90, that's, that's a pretty I think you might have gone a little overboard yeah. with Rissa. Sorry yeah. to say. No, it's fair. It's a fair point. You know, Solid race, mm -hmm. uh, definitely mm -hmm. worth checking out. You know, if I'll you're, if you're unsure, you can always stop by like Scarecrow. I'll be right and, here. Yep. I'll be right here. Finally, uh, my favorite release Ooh, of the week. Your uh, favorite? Yeah, I think it was my <laughs> number two film of 2012. Wow. If you believe it or not, I and, do believe it. <laughs> and that is the perks of being a wallflower. Yes. This is the second film from director Stephen Shabatsky, mm -hmm. uh, based on a book that he had written. Yes. I guess. 15 something years before. Mm -hmm. And he wrote the screenplay as well. Yep. And directed. And directed. Um, starring a whole bunch of interesting people. Um, you know, Dylan McDermott, mm -hmm. um, Kate surprising. Walsh, Emma Watson. Mm -hmm. um, all, great, great cast. Um, you can, if you want more information, go to our interview with Stephen Shabosky. Yes. Very nice guy. But, you know, it's a very touching story of, you know, a kid's sort of entrance into high school after dealing with the suicide of his best friend yes. and the friends he makes while there and you know sort of the events that occur to all of them during that year it's a, it's a very really kind of outcast group mm -hmm. somewhat yeah it's a very touching touching story um in terms of the the release of this you know unfortunately you know it's not every uh 
medium in one package <laughs> yeah. and it got like blu-ray dvd etc but you know in terms of the release itself it's pretty good you got an audio commentary from steven shabatsky awesome that's fine you got an audio commentary from shabatsky and the cast together which i think very is cool. going to be interesting because it's a very different dynamics yeah. between the two Definitely. i think the first one he supposedly talks much more about the process of adapting the book and stuff like that and writing it and whatnot and his experience with that and this one you know involves like the cast and their experience Very so cool. that's cool um similarly there's a featurette about the friendships that developed during the making of this huh. movie from the cast and whatnot that's uh, surprising you're playing coming of age story yeah, that totally, your yeah. the actors would totally. link up and then you have some deleted scenes with optional commentary from steven Shabatsky. so that's very nice pretty good very much covering sort of the making of the film which is one of those things that i like most yes. when i see special features on a movie exactly so. i want to see the people who made it talk about making it yeah that's not just producers that. talk about producing. No, or no just, offense to producers. I mean, deleted scenes are all well and good, but you know, most of the time they're deleted for a reason. Yes. So it and usually music doesn't. videos are irrelevant. Which actually, still in, in, this, in case of this movie, that actually would have made sense because a huge element of the plot is the music that they listen That's to right. in the movie. Yes. So it, it would have made sense. Strangely, they don't have any, but you know, good. What you, you going to do? Good. I mean, and this is just a sampling of the stuff that came out this week. I mean, yeah. there's other stuff like the sessions that we're mm -hmm. not even going to talk about, which was a very interesting. Yeah, and film. like every Bond movie came out on DVD, on Blu-ray, just about a whole again. A, yeah, individually released. When you can yeah. already get like the 50 years of Bond. I know. It's, I know. All right. All right. They got, they got to cash in. Yeah, they're doing the universal thing. Oh, we have a big number to sell. Let's re-release mm. everything. No different, but with a 50th anniversary written on the front. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of sad. It's money grubbing. That's yeah. what it is. But anyway, you can join us uh, for episode 230 mm -hmm. and our discussion of young adult films mm -hmm. through, uh, through a wide range of time. Yes. Sort of the evolution of them, if yeah. you will. leading into Beautiful Creatures. Exactly, which comes out this Friday, the 15th of mm -hmm. February. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number. 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blipped TV, Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some sticker badges, things. There's now an iPhone app for it, too. Look so at you can that. Check in there, so. Not a Droid app, though? I don't know. Come on, Kevin. I don't, I don't, I don't acknowledge the existence <laughs> oh, of Droid. Oh, you don't? No. Well, you, there's one sitting right next to you, so you better acknowledge it. These are not the droids. The <laughs> there's two droids sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.